How are y'all doing today? This is Stephanie from Apex Languages. You ready for some more grammar? Well, how about we learn a little bit more about question words then? Last week, we talked about four different types of yes-no questions. Inflection, inversion, deletion, and grammatical do. The good news is that these are the same structures we're going to use with other types of questions as well. The ones that we're talking about today depend on the use of one or more question words. They are who, what, when, where, why, and how. The fact that all of these start with the letter WH, well, except that weirdo how, makes it easier to remember them. Just don't forget the H, otherwise you end up with were instead of where, for example. Did you know that the question words are actually different parts of speech? Who and what are pronouns? When, where, why, and how are adverbs. This makes a difference in how they're used in a sentence. Who and what, which we'll spend more time talking about next week, represent either the subject, object, or maybe an object of a preposition. Who did you do this for? Is the same as for whom did you do this, or you did this for whom? But native speakers often prefer leaving the preposition dangling all by itself at the end, like you see here. The adverb's job, on the other hand, is to describe the verb. In general, a lot of time and location descriptors are adverbs, now and there, for example, depending on how you use the latter. The answer to your question may use either an adverb or a prepositional phrase, because prepositions too can describe verbs by connecting them to nouns. For example, how do you run? I run quickly, or I run with my legs. I run quickly, that's an adverb. I run with my legs, that's a preposition followed by a noun. Either way, the focus of the question word is not what it is doing or being affected by the action, but the action itself. So let's get down to the details now, starting with inflection. And we're going to take a look at our traditional word order in English, subject, verb, one or more objects, adverb, and prepositional phrases. Last week, um, we didn't deal with those two latter ones, but we've got adverbs now. So let's see how they all fit in. You study English. So inflection, again, means that just by changing the way I say something, I can make it a question. You study English, you study English. Okay, I raise my voice at the end. When you write, you add the question mark. When you speak, you raise your voice and it creates a question. Um, just keep in mind, inflection is used to insinuate some sort of doubt or surprise. So like, you study English, right? You study English? I'm surprised, I or I don't quite believe it. So remember, it's not the same as just a, a question. Or, you know, you can ask, um, you know, do you study English? That's just, I wanna know yes or no. But you study English? I'm still looking for a yes, no answer. Um, but, you know, there's just more implied, this idea of, really or really right either surprise or doubt so let's put in some of our question words here i've got the noun question words who studies what you can see um i study english so they're just uh they're just pronouns they just replace the nouns here they're replacing the subject and the direct object who studies what Now we've got the adverbs one. So you can see you study English where? It's over here in the adverb place. You study English where? Right, and we're, we're describing the studying. Where is the studying taking place? You study English when? You study English why? <laughs> okay, you know the answer to that. You study, you study English how? 
So you can create all these sentences by just having the adverb in the adverb place, okay? And by raising your voice at the end. The much more neutral and more common way to ask these yes, no questions, however, is through inversion. Now inversion requires some sort of auxiliary verb. Okay, that's just basic inversion. So you are studying, you switch the subject and the verb. The verb goes first. So are you studying? You are studying why? So the thing about, so basic inversion, are you studying? You switch with a noun in front of the subject. When you want to add the question word, however, that adverb is actually going to go in front of the verb. So you have, why are you studying? So the new order becomes adverb, verb, subject, complement. Because the only thing you're doing is putting the question mark into the very first place, there is still no reason why you can't still do deletion. That's when you get rid of uh, one of the basic auxiliaries, be, have, or do. So you could say, why are you studying? Again, deletion is only very informal. So you're speaking with your friends. Um, it's not really for writing, maybe texting, but not for uh, professional writing, okay? Uh, but why are you studying? Why are you doing that? You will hear this. And that's, that's the deletion. But back to regular inversion, let's practice a little bit more, a couple more examples. Where have you studied? So have you, uh, you have studied where becomes have you studied, right? The verb goes in front of the subject and the adverb goes in front of the verb. And so again, that word order is adverb, verb, subject, complement. Where have you studied? And then of course we can do modals, not with deletion, but with regular inversion. Okay, we've got that big list of modals. We're just a subgenre of auxiliary verbs. When will you study? Okay, so can, could, may, might, will, would, uh, shall, should, right? Those are your motives. So when will you study? Finally, do. Now, keep in mind that grammatical do is just another auxiliary verb. So you're not doing anything new here. It's basic inversion. The only trick is recognizing the existence of goes, do. There's an invisible but implied do in front of every verb you use. It would have been a very, very old linguistic structure that's long since been dropped for normal period ending statements. But the fact that we still see grammatical do, no meaning, just grammatical function, all over the place, like in questions and negative sentences, must mean that its ghost is still very much present, haunting our syntax or sentence structure. Once you come to accept goes do, the rest is just a matter, like I said, of regular inversion. Moving the verb do to the front, leaving the infinitive direct object study, where it is with the other complements, if there are any others. And finally, if you want, adding a question word in front. So, do you study or how do you study? Where do you study? When do you study, right? It's time for practice, hooray. If you remember last week, I asked you to write me a question, any yes or no question. This week, I would like you to rewrite uh, the question that you asked last week or make up a new one, this time using a question word. So how did I do? Did you learn something new? I certainly hope so. Thanks as always for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com and have a happy, healthy, safe rest of your day.